In this video, I'm going to show you how to approximate areas under curves. Similar to how we use the tangent problem to introduce the derivative, the area problem will introduce you to the need for the integral. We're going to start with the rectangular approximation method. So you can approximate the area under a curve using rectangles. To do this, divide the base interval into pieces, which we'll call subintervals. Then on each subinterval, you're going to build the rectangle that goes up to the curve. So what does it mean to go up to the curve? So let's take a look here. So we have this curve, and what I'm going to do is we're going to build up rectangles, which means that I need to choose the height. So we're going to um, build this up over here and then make a rectangle. Now, each rectangle's height in this diagram is related to the left-hand endpoint of each subinterval. So notice I go up to the curve to the left and then build my rectangle down. Go up to the top and build my rectangle down. Go up to the curve, build the rectangle and come down. Now the picture above uses subintervals of different sizes, but for simplicity, you will often use subintervals of the same size so they will have the same width. In the picture below, there are eight rectangles of equal widths. And the rectangle's height is related to the curve above the right-hand endpoint of each subinterval. So if you take a look at the each rectangle, the right endpoint is based on the curve. So we go up. So all of the right endpoints, notice, of the rectangle is on the curve. Now suppose that a function is continuous on the interval a to b, and the function f of x is greater or equal to 0 for all of the x values in a to b. So let's say that this is from a, and this is b here. It, if we divide the interval into n equal subintervals and construct a rectangle over each subinterval, then the width of each subinterval would be delta x. So we call that a change in x. And it would be b minus a, so that's the distance from b to a. And then we're going to divide it by n because we made n equal subintervals. The height of each rectangle would be f of x. And sometimes you will see f of x with a little k. Then the sum of the rectangular areas would give an approximation of the area under the curve. So notice that the area of the rectangles are, most of them are under, some are above, but it's the area under the curve, but it's above the x-axis, and it's between A and B. So let's take a look at an example. So here I want you to find the approximate area of the region. It's bounded by y equals x squared, and the x-axis, but I also want you to bound it between 0 and 1. And we're going to divide it into four subintervals as indicated. So as indicated meaning that we're going to do a left endpoint, a right endpoint, and then also a midpoint approximation. So recall that the area of a rectangle is equal to base times height. So because we're going from 0 to 1, and I want four subintervals, I can see that the length of each base is going to be a quarter. And then the height of each rectangle is going to be based on y equals x squared, so it's going to be x squared. Now, I'm going to actually use x i all squared. So the first um, approximation that I want to use is the left endpoint. So we're going to choose rectangles so that the left endpoint will represent the height. Okay, so for this first one, the left endpoint from 0 to 1 is a height of 0. So we have a quarter times 0 squared. Plus the next one, we have it looking like this. So we have a quarter as our width times, and right to here, this value here is going to be one quarter. So this will be one quarter. 
and then it will be squared because that gives us the height to the curve. The next one will be from here. And this height here is based on a half. Now I'm going to show you, I'm actually going to use two over four. So I'm going to use an equivalent fraction and you'll see why in the next step. Okay, we have one more rectangle over here. So it goes up to here. And this will be my rectangle. So again, it's going to be a quarter. And this value here that gives me the height of that x value is going to be three quarters. So three quarters is the x value and the height will be three quarters squared. All right, so notice that every term has a quarter, so I'm going to actually factor that out. So then I have 0 plus 1 over 16 plus 4 over 16 plus 9 over 16. So you can see that the purpose of me keeping it to be 2 fourths was so that I have a common denominator of 16 so that I can actually add all these together. So I got 1 plus 4 plus 9, and that will give me... 14 over 16. I can reduce the 4 and the 14 to be 2 and 7. So I get 7 over 32. Now you can see that because the curve goes up and all my rectangles are below the curve, this value here is an underestimate. So notice that the rectangular width is a quarter. Um, it factors out of the sum, and then you can add up all the f's and then multiply by this width, which is a quarter. This will always be possible if you use subintervals of equal length. So if, that's why it's kind of convenient to use subintervals of equal um, width. All right, let's take a look at what happens when we choose a right endpoint approximation. So this time, if this is our rectangle, we're going to base it on the right side. So there is the height of our first rectangle. So using this fact that we did with, um, we found with a left endpoint approximation, I'm gonna have the quarter factored out already. So I know that the right endpoint here, we start at a quarter. So we get a quarter for our x value to find the height. It's gonna be quarter squared. Plus the next one, we build it up from the right side and that's going to be 2 quarters squared plus, so this rectangle here is next, all the way to here, and that's going to be 3 quarters all squared. And then finally, this one goes all the way up to the top, like this, on this right end point. And that will be 1 squared or 4 fourths squared. All right, so squaring all of this, I get 1 over 16, 4 over 16, plus 9 over 16, and then plus 16 over 16. So conveniently, they're all 16s, so I get 1 fourth times 30 over 16, and the 4s will cross off with the 30, so we get 2 and 15. So now I have 15 over 32. Now this time, you notice that, again, the curve goes up. So because the curve is moving up and we're choosing right endpoints, this is going to be an overestimate. All right, lastly, let's do a midpoint approximation. So this time, the height is going to be chosen at the midpoint of the rectangle. So the midpoint would be right here. So this one's a very skinny rectangle on the bottom. And knowing that this is 1, this first value, since these are divided up into quarters, this x value is 1 eighth. So we're going to say that the area is a fourth, and I'm going to use the same method that I did for the left end, sorry, for the right end point. And I'm going to take a 1 eighth as my x value, and to find the height of that rectangle, we need to square it, because that is our function. So the next one will be here, so we build that. This will be where our point is. So this one is going to be 3 eighths. And then we're going to square it to find our height. OK, 
Okay, next one here is going to be 5 eighths squared. And then the last one, which is right here, is going to be 7 eighths. So plus 7 eighths all squared. So we get 1 fourth times 1 over 64 plus 9 over 64 plus 25 over 64 and then 49 over 64. Okay, simplify my fraction and I get 84 over 64. Reduce the 4 with the 84 to give me 21. So here I get 21 out of 64. Now, notice that for the midpoint approximation, there's a little bit above the curve, but then a little bit below the curve. So we actually have this empty space. But if you actually move this part that's above to that empty space, it kind of is a close approximation. And that can happen with all of these little pieces and every rectangle. Now that happens because we have a parabola here. So we can actually check, or well, you can't check yet, but I can tell you the midpoint is the best approximation, and it's usually the case, and you can tell by the picture. The actual area under the curve of y equals x squared from 0 to 1 is actually 1 third. So it's a very good approximation. So to conclude, uh, the midpoint rule, um, now this is written very complica complicatedly, but it says delta x times f of x1 plus f of x2 plus dot 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 f of x n. Those lines above mean it's the midpoint or the middle value of that axis. So delta x is what it, um, is our width. Notice it's b minus a divided by n. And then the xi, meaning the 1, 2, 3, up to n, is going to be half the distance from the lower value, i minus 1, to the higher value, xi. So those are consecutive numbers, um, or consecutive x points to be more exact. And what we're going to do is we're going to half that, and that will give us the middle of that rectangle. And that will, that will be the value that we plug into our function. So it can be shown that a definition of area is the following. The area is a unique number that is smaller than all the upper sums and bigger than all the lower sums. So you can see in the above example that the area, a equals one third, is trapped between all the left approximating sums, l, and all the right approximating sums, r. So the function y equals x squared, now in this one, it happens to be increasing on zero to one. And so the lower sums arise from the left endpoints and the upper sums from the right endpoints. Now, if the graph happened to be decreasing, then the reverse would happen. Then our left endpoints would give us upper sums, and the right endpoints would give me lower sums, such as this. So notice for the right endpoints, we now would get lower sums. But if we're doing left endpoints, we would now be above the curve. So those would give me upper sums.